So this chapter has been an insight into the economic value human development index a very new and a very important index human development index is a very very interesting factor that tries to compare the bombay stock exchange probably the oldest stock exchange in asia so the calculation of volume index will be inappropriate when one needs a value Good morning and welcome to the last and final session, session 3 on index number, chapter 8 in economics. This is an interesting chapter. Now we are going to learn about the various types of indexes that really matter and govern the economy in total. So this chapter has been an insight into the economic value, the economic factors that govern the country and that tries to understand the developmental mode for any country altogether. So moving forward, these are the topics that we are going to cover today. Human Development Index, a very new and a very important index that has been measured worldwide in order to study the developmental value of human beings in each and every country. This involves a lot of social factors. So definitely this particular human development index matters a lot for most of the countries because that's what makes their country really the most livable, likable and the best country in the world. The Sensex, not to forget, it's, it's really like the pulse. It's really like your heartbeat that keeps on pulsating on a day-to-day -day basis. It moves from Monday to Friday. That is what determines the pulse of the market. So Sensex, not to forget and not to just get away from that. This is very, very important from the investments, from the equity markets altogether. Issues in terms of the construction of an index number. So we are going to see some of the challenges that are happening in terms of constructing index number. And the finally factor is that index numbers in economics, we are going to understand a deeper value of how index number will make a difference in economics. So moving forward, let's try to understand the word human development index. Now, if you look here, one of the most important and a useful index that is worldwide used by many countries is human development index what is that human development index all about it tries to emphasize about the people the capabilities the ultimate capacity of a nation that makes their citizens believe on the factor why their country is the best country in the world to live so this is a very very important and a key factor that will make every nation feel proud about themselves because if you start looking at the development of a nation just leaving the economics apart for a while there are many factors there are many social factors that come inside to make a country the best livable altogether now for example if you look at smaller countries like finland poland denmark norway sweden all these countries have been topping, including Austria, has been topping the charts of the most livable countries in the index. The reason for that, the climatic conditions, the social conditions, the way how people are able to get a job, the way how the people are being treated, the facilities, the amenities, the environmental factors all decide the country size in terms of making it the best country in the world to live in. So human development index will stress upon the factor how humans interact in terms of the nation, in terms of the society and that makes them even more interesting by finding out how they are able to cope up and live with these kind of countries now the hdi is also used to question the national policy choices now for example if you look at the indian subcontinent altogether we have different kinds of policies starting from the monetary policy fiscal policies there are many policies: the health policy the foreign affairs policy and all those kind of things but then what is more interesting is that there are countries which are even more interactive even more directly concerned with that of the people who try to make you understand about this factor that what are the choices of the people what is the real factor that will make the people get attached to the nation get attached to the living conditions and make them even more livable altogether so for example let's say that we have a policy on religious tolerance we have a policy on education we have a policy on healthcare. we have a policy on insurance all these factors are a part of your HDI. 
But all these policies, what we are talking about, might not be mandatory, might not be available to everyone in our country. Whereas in other country, like let's say I'm going to talk about Switzerland, I'm going to talk about Sweden, or I'm going to take about Australia or Germany, might be in these countries, these preferences are given to each and every citizen. So now what happens is that people who live in these countries feel that their country has given even more priority. They have given even more wider choices for living and the better conditions. So that is why human development index is a very, very interesting factor that tries to compare the living standards of two countries. So that is the reason when you try to compare India with other countries in the globe, there might be a huge fraction of difference that starts emerging altogether. So human development index is very, very important economically, socially, and also you need to imbibe it as a part of your developmental economics altogether. So this is why I say that when you start understanding the index number, there are many factors that will help us to understand, to develop, and to grow better as a nation. Moving forward. The Human Development Index has also got these factors. These are trying to understand, stimulate debate and contrast on priorities altogether. Now, for example, in India, healthcare is still not a very big priority. We don't make it a mandatory issue. There are many people in India who have not still subscribed for a healthcare policy or for an insurance. But that might not be true in UK. That might not be true in Austria. That might not be true in Sweden or in Switzerland. There it is mandatory from the government itself that you need to have an insurance policy. You need to have an health care. Now, why these things come under a debatable topic when we are talking in, in, in economics altogether is that there are certain countries where priorities are being made mandatory, where choices are being made inclusive, but there are certain countries in the world which are still working on choices, which are still working on the factors, how to make it as an inclusive. So for the developed nation versus the developing nation, the debate always remains. What are the conditions? What are the factors? What are those minute natures or the minute friction things that needs to be included so that even my country will become a developed country altogether? So the Human Development Index is a summary of the achievement that the nation has made over the last few years, over the last year, in terms of making their country even more attractive, even more beneficial, and even more a better place to live in. So many a times, even in the tourism index, when you start understanding, certain countries will have an edge, even though they are small, even though they are minute islands in the geographical map, but still, they are the most attractive destination because the HDI factor, the human development index in those cities, in those small tourism places will play a large difference altogether. Similarly, it's a geometric mean. So I'm going to use this word geometric mean of normalized index in three dimensions. So you will be able to understand the HDI index, not just by one single value, but it is about different dimensions of living that have been put together in order to make this as a factor of livable condition, as a factor of growth altogether. So this human development index is a large and a composite index, which is very, very interesting for all of us to understand, all of us to know and to make our country a better destination for economic growth. Moving forward, we are going to talk about the Sensex or the Sensitivity Index. The Bombay Stock Exchange, probably the oldest stock exchange in Asia, which I would like to talk about, one of the oldest and one of the largest stock exchange that you can talk about. It, it is known for the amount, the huge amount of listing of companies that have been seen in the Bombay Stock Exchange. And the base year on which the Sensex was formed was in the year 1978 to 79. That was kept as the base year, though the exchange opened several years before. The value of the Sensex is with the reference to this period. So always starting from the year 78 to 79 is the base year. And from there, we keep comparing it till today. That's about 2020. So about a 41 year index. That's what we are going to talk about on the Sensex. The Sensex is primarily about the stock market that happens in our country. And this is about the Bombay Stock Exchange. The Bombay Stock Exchange has got 
30 stocks which govern the Sensex, 30 top blue chip companies which perform on a daily basis and they are the factors that determine and they move the market altogether. So any minute changes, any kind of factors that really affect this 30 companies will be immediately reflected on the Sensex altogether. So the Sensex is a sensitivity index. It senses the minute changes, the minute frictions, the fractions that happens together in the market and we'll try to talk about on the stock exchange altogether now to give you an example today there was an rbi policy meet on the monetary policy committee altogether so the monetary policy came up with certain suggestions on how the banking sector needs to look forward and how the finances have to be restructured altogether there was an immediate impact of the monetary policy committee meeting that happened on the sensex altogether so that is how the sensex and the national stock exchange both of them which are located in india will definitely show some sort of movement immediately based on the economic events that are happening in the country it consists of 30 stocks as i have told you very very important all these 30 stocks are the top movers of the economy that 30 stocks are from different verticals altogether they are from cement they are from banking they are from healthcare they are from manufacturing they are from fmcg from all walks of life and all these 30 stocks will govern the sensex altogether so not to forget sensex is a very very important index and a very big important mover altogether and it has 13 sectors not to worry 13 large sectors on which the entire Bombay Stock Exchange works and that's how the respective industries are able to make their movement altogether. Now, moving forward, what you need to understand here in terms of the issues that are involved in the construction of the index number altogether there are many issues there are many factors on which the index number has gone into problems or into challenges but the first thing is that you need to be clear about the purpose of the index on what basis are you developing the index on what factors is which the index is being developed so the calculation of volume index will be inappropriate when one needs a value index we cannot just go by volume every time if you are going by a value factor you need to understand understand what are the factors that are governing the value similarly the items that are not equally important in different groups because every single item every single commodity might not be considered important but there might be factors which will be considered important that's where the consumer price index is considered or it is built upon the rise in petrol price may not be a direct impact in living conditions though it is true because these days it matters than that of for the poor agricultural labors now if you look here the comparison is quite striking for a person who is having a car who is having a scooter for him the price of petrol will matter but for a poor agricultural labor who is living on his daily wages who does not even have a two-wheeler who does not even have a normal living condition for him the rise in petrol might not affect so the challenge of index number is that it is not equally important to all it varies in terms of sectors it varies in terms of person to person the next factor items to be included in any index will have to be selected carefully which means to say that it has to be taken in a particular format it has to be taken in a particular way so that it is understandable and then it is possible to construct it altogether you need to get a meaningful picture that's very very important because you cannot just rush through an index number and say that yes i have analyzed and this is the value until and unless you analyze and you get a meaningful value altogether you will not be able to do that change or you will not be able to do the factor similarly every index should have a base year so you need to have a base year 2020 2019 18 whichever is the base year upon which you will be able to construct an index number and you will be able to take it forward moving forward the another issue is the choice of the formula many a times people make any choice they want to just put in a formula and they say that yes i've arrived with certain results but then the challenge here is that that formula might not be appropriate or that formula is not exactly measuring the changes altogether 
So what kind of formula are you using? Are you using price into quantity or quantity into some other factor? The formula has to be clear enough so that the nature of question on which you want to get the answer needs to be answered properly. You cannot just use a formula because it's available and you can say that a construction of index has been done. You need to use an appropriate formula. You need to understand what we are trying to trigger here and then we will be able to get the necessary answer. Similarly, many sources of data with different degrees of reliability, there are many sources of data with the different degrees of reliability. So how much are you trying to define? Are you going to trust on the data also matters in terms of constructing an index number. If you are just going to construct an index number based on some assumptions, based on some values that just come over, then you will not be able to do this. So you need to have a trustable source of data and that data needs to be taken from a reliable background which will have an equal importance, an equal weightage and then you will be able to construct an index number which will transform a meaningful information back to the people or else what you would be doing is that a misleading result altogether. And that is why whenever you see a news channel or whenever you hear to any of the news that's happening in the social event, that's happening in any of the economic circuit altogether, they try to give you data based on the life facts so that when people are watching it, when people are able to understand it, they will be able to decipher the meaning of that data, where the data is coming, why the data is affecting our daily life. So every time when you are talking about an index number, when you are going to construct an index number, you need to have your facts and figures in such a manner that you will be able to produce meaningful results altogether. Now moving forward. The index numbers in economics. Index numbers in economics starts with your CPI which helps you a lot in terms of understanding your living standards. So consumer price index by default it's a part and parcel of your life. You cannot forget it. You cannot afford to leave it. So CPI is one of the most important thing that will help you to understand the wage labors, the fractions, the living conditions, all those things in terms of your day-to-day -day economics. The wholesale price index is also an important thing for the traders, for the agriculturists, for the producers because it will tell you on what is the base on which the factors of the commodities are moving, what is the price and what's the relative in terms of comparison altogether. So you have two important things, you have a CPI and you have a WPI, consumer price index and the wholesale price index two important aspects in economics altogether. This has to be kept in your mind and this will always be continuing for us to understand the economics better. This is a widely used measure so it is always useful for us when we start understanding the movement of this consumer price and the wholesale price index. Now moving forward we come to the conclusion for today's session. On a concluding notice, we need to understand index number is that statistical device that's used for measuring the relative change. Definitely, yes, we have been able to understand and appreciate that factor. There are several formulas that have been on working out of it. Definitely, we have seen last price, price index, a simple aggregate. We have seen a weighted aggregate. So there are multiple formulas available in index number for your benefit altogether. The formula choice depends on the question. So as I have always told you, the type of question, what you are going to answer, it will lead you to the answer altogether. So you will not be able to generalize every time and come out with the same formula. While index numbers are on the wholesale as well as on the consumer price factor, there are several indexes that are being used. So that is what we are trying to understand. And this is an indispensable tool in economics policy making. So at any given point of time, this is not one simple step. This is not one single way of understanding, but this is the most important tool in economics altogether. With this, we come to the conclusion of today's session the index numbers of chapter 8 in economics. I hope and believe this chapter was highly informative, useful, educative together. And I also want to emphasize on this factor that please do not take index number lightly whenever you come across any news, whenever you come across any economic events that are happening, please make an relevance, please make a relative importance of index numbers towards it. Then you will be able to understand, you will be able to appreciate that economic importance, the economic event value altogether. 
Until then, stay tuned, stay blessed. Thank you once again for joining me today.